Hi guys, uh, welcome back to uh, Saw Tackle Caravan. Um, see, I've not been um, on YouTube for a little while because I've been busy in the shop. Um, busy trying to do stuff at home, have a bit of a break and everything else. Um, so, just going on a few things I've come across in the shop. Um, talking to uh, people coming in, um, especially a few people that are sort of actually starting to get into fishing um, so one of the biggest things I keep coming across is uh, plumbing of depths um, and trying to get it across in to people how it works and the fundamentals of it so I've, I sort of thought how do I put a little video together of that I know I've done a little bit on um, showing the whip um, on the pond but it kind of I don't think it goes into it properly um, so I thought can I use my pond at home? But then you can't really see what's happening. So I thought, right, I know. We float shopping tube. I know there's not much there and I've had to um, try and drag it around to try and make it so you can hopefully see what's happening. Maybe that might give, um, hopefully it'll give you a bit of an idea of um, plumbing the depth up and the sort of fundamentals behind it. So what I've done, right. So pretty short rig because we're uh, obviously only in the tube. Um, so in a nutshell, plumbing the depth is obviously getting the depth right for the hook being near the bottom and the float just showing out the water. I personally use quite big plummets. Um, this, is, this is 20 gram. I normally use a bigger plummet to start with and then I'll plumb up again with something a bit lighter. The reason being is I like to find that the plummet it bumps up and down on the bottom of whether it's on the canal or the river um, or lake. I, I can actually, especially on a pole, um, as you pole, you fish, you, you're only plumbing at the end of, end of the pole, whether it's pole or whip. We'll talk a bit more about that in a minute. But you can actually feel it bumping up and down. I like to plumb it. You can't always feel it. Um, I mean, yes. People say a heavier plummet will sink in the silt, which it does, which again I, I prefer that because I can actually feel the suction of the silt. If a plummet sunk in the silt, I can actually feel it. And I, I can feel around and I can feel whether it's, uh, as you start to learn how, how, it, how it all works and you'll feel it down, whether it's down the rod or down your pole or etc. You will actually feel the difference between a hard bottom and a silty bottom. And also for dragging around, if you were to try and drag it to find a bit of weed, a heavier plummet will help because obviously it'll, it being that bit heavier, it will hang on to the bottom a bit more. Um, so there is advantages of fishing with a heavier plummet, especially if you're learning. And then if you do find silt, then you could either take an extra bit off the depth for um, like I've done, as I'll probably clip a very, very light plummet on and double check. Um, the other thing again, just going back to the silt, I've noticed on the um, last few times of going out and fishing on um, the canals where I know it's silty, with a heavier plummet, as I lift it up because it's stuck in the silt, I actually drag some of the silt up off the bottom and you get a cloud of silt come up. Um, obviously it's a good indication of how silt it is, it gives you an idea of what colour the silt is. Um, so it, it gives you, it, it just, it, it uh, shows you all sorts of bits and bobs. Plumbing is quite an important part of fishing, really. Right, so like I said earlier, we've made a, a short rig. Um, this is obviously a pole float rig um, with a 20 gram plummet hook on the end as normal. You probably notice there's no shot on that at all. I didn't bother putting any shot just for this. So what we're looking at trying to do then, so for those that uh, sort of sort of relatively new to this and really sort of I'm not 100% sure about plumbing up um, so the difference being obviously fishing uh, plumbing up rod and line and, and the pole so we'll, we'll go from plumbing up the depth on a pole so if you're going out fishing you've got an elasticated whip or a pole you only want to be fishing as far out as that pole or whip is long you don't want to be flicking the rig out past the pole to plumb up. So literally, so you're going out, lifting it up, and then lowering it in. So everything's going in, especially on the canal or a pond, it's going in on a, st in on a straight line. So then effectively you're plumbing up at the end of that pole. 
which is why pole fishing is so good it can be really really accurate form of fishing so if you remember that only plumb up as far out as that pole or whip is long so we'll, we'll do that first so all we're doing is so if you imagine we're lowering that plummet you can see it's going down 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 so it's lowering in at the end of the pole or whip and as it gets to the bottom the line goes slack so what you're trying to do is find for that little bit you're trying to get that lightly put a bit of tension in the line and then you'll start to feel that plummet bumping on the bottom so because there's no shot on the float the float naturally wants to um, sit up in the water obviously if you if you if your pole floats already shot as you bought a pre-tied rig and it's got all the shot on effectively it will want to sit up in the water but if you just put that a little bit of tension in it so you can just feel the weight of the plummet and you you will feel it it's quite it's amazing what you can feel so hopefully on this on the screen i mean i can see it because it's playing back to me um the float is underneath the water at the minute so then what i would do is obviously i bring the float back out the water to myself and all I'm going to do is add a little bit of um, depth to it now one top tip especially when you're using wire stem um, floats and things like that when you're sliding the float up hold the float by the top hold the line taut at the bottom and slide the float up so we're sliding it up about an inch if we're going to take some depth off and hold the float at the bottom and hold the line above and slide the float down that way it stops you if if the float sticks to the line and you're sliding it trying to slide it down by the top of the float you can end up either breaking or bending the stem of the float likewise do it the opposite way around anyway so we're going to add so we're going to hold bottom of the float well below the bottom of the float on the line and the top of the float and slide it up a little bit and then we'll go back out so this is something you take a bit of time about. There's no rush to plumb in the depth fork. It's very important. So we're going out and we've added a bit too much depth. Look, the float's nearly half a float length, well, nearly a full float length out of the water. So effectively we'll bring the float back to us. And then we'll, again, hold the float by the bottom, hold the line by the top, slide the float down. We'll go back out. We're nearly there, look. That's just... If you can, hopefully you can see, I'll try and move the camera in a minute. So that is just about right. So we'll probably need to add, just add, take a little bit more depth off. So again, holding the float by the bottom, or just take a little, just a touch off. So what we're looking at doing is trying to get that float so it's just sat with the tip in the water. Let me see if I can bring this up to the camera without spilling it. Right, so you can should be able to just see that that float, it's just sat nicely in that water so the tip of the float is just showing that as an angler that's what we call dead depth so we'll find that depth at the end of our whip or our pole and we know that, that right at the end there that's bang on so the hook sat on the bottom we've got the line to the correct depth the float sat lovely in the water now I've got that then I'll have a look around I'll go over to my left and over to my right. I might go out in, might just flick it out in front of me and just see if it does shelve off, or I'll come back to me and see if it shallows up. And it starts to build up a little bit of a picture of what's around you. So effectively, you, you, you might find that it shelves off, and you might actually think, don't, if you think of where natural food might get drifted around, it might just drift into the those slightly deep places or you might think fish want to be in the shallower water so you might need to come back a section and then take a bit of depth off but if you you want to get that starter first so if you think right I'm going to fish um, six sections out or however if you might be on a four meter fixed whip or one of our starter kits you fish four meters out check the depth bang on I've got it right I'll have a little plumb around I'll just check around here and check around there see if there's any differences I mean that is this is quite important especially on flowing waters um, to check the depth around you so we've got that and on one of my other little videos can't really show this here I would normally bring that out clip the hook into the bottom of my section on the pole if I can um, if it's on the whip 
with it so it keeps all nice and tight up against the pole and then I use a little bit of Tipex and mark where the float sits on the pole so I put a little mark at the top of the float a little mark at the bottom of the float that means I can move the float up and down so I might want to take half inch of depth off and I know I've taken half an inch of depth off because there's a line on the pole and I can add half an inch and I can play around with the depth throughout the day uh, so I might actually start off the bottom I always know that if I put it back between the marks it's dead depth so that's a brilliant useful little beast kit and also if if you do hopefully if you tie your uplinks and all your uplinks are the same size um, you'll be alright but if you do break a hook link and put a new hook link on you know that the float is back bang on where you originally did all that depth because you, you've already spent that bit of time plumbing up you've probably spent 20 minutes plumbing up you're only spending 20 minutes again plumbing up really um, so that in a nutshell is how we plumb up a pole line slightly different in obviously in rivers you need to be plumbing up a bit further down the river might come up and you might have to compromise a little bit about where the depth is because if a river's coming up then you're going to start dragging bottom um, or it might drop off so you, you, again it's a, it just comes with a bit of learning you say so you might have to compromise a little bit um, and if, if it drops off in front of you fish that depth if, you, if it's a sudden drop off you might want to come back a bit again or you might you might think I'm gonna to have to go over that drop-off the fish might be sitting at the end of that drop-off so the main thing is obviously just make sure you, that that is it in a nutshell there's nothing massively complicated about it it's just about learning a bit more about the swim so you're trying to make sure obviously the plummets on the bottom so if I do that way around it out of the water you might see plummets on the bottom and the floats just sat nicely in the water floats above the water you need to adjust it down and vice versa so it all sits so the only difference being then is a um, few people are out um, waggler fishing so waggler there's a little waggler um, I found it's an old midi one actually Dave Costa um, right so a little tiny waggler just for purpose of demonstration obviously the waggler is attached through the bottom of it so to plumb the depth up, if you hold the line sort of half taut, it's going to do that in the water. It's going to sit on its side. So we have to change things slightly. So what I'm going to do is just slide. I'm going to slide this float off of here. I'm hoping it's going to work in this um, jar. I'm sure it will do to a point. Right, so we slid that off. Right. Give you a little tip. Um, if, you, if you're going out, you don't, probably don't know much. You might not know these. Um, float adapters, little float adapters, pushes on the bottom of the waggler, or it's that sort of float. Actually, this is way too big for this float. It's got a little swivel attachment in, but it means if you want to change the float, just pull that off. That stays on the line. Happy days, save messing around. But that's a bit big for this float. You need a smaller one. Right. So, um, what we're so we're, we're putting a waggler on. We're trying to put a waggler on. <coughs> So this is a um, 0.8 of a gram 2BB, um, but I'm going to shot it, I would normally shot it with, I wouldn't just put 2BBs on, I'd change the shot and that's another subject to talk about, um, what have we got, I'll just grab some out of my box here, I don't know whether I'm going to be able to put these on, right, number fours, these are slot shot, not round shot, um, I've got no so these are the square shot so what best thing to do if you're waggler fishing whether you're on flowing water still water whatever is under shot it to start with so obviously it makes it naturally buoyant well, i managed to do it but it shows you how nice and soft this midi slot shot is right so you put your shot on that's proper on there isn't it always leave, I could do with a bit more of a gap on that, but when you put your shot on the waggler, leave a bit of a gap, because then when you strike, it allows it to fall flat. Right, so, we'll see whether this is going to work in this tube. Well, it is, right, so, 
again hopefully you'll be able to see this on the camera let's try and move this forwards a little bit without spilling it again right hopefully we can see that right so if i hold the line taut you see that how the waggler wants to it, it, it wants to sit on the side so basically when you're waggler fishing that's why i was saying you want to undershot it now if you undershot it float wants to float and then you can use a slack line then so once once you've plumbed up again you, you try not to plumb too far out um, again the longer the rod you use it is you can almost plumb up like you would on a pole so what you're doing is probably an underarm flick you'll need over the period of time you might be able to teach yourself how to feather the line so you feather the line with a reel and once you get to the point you trap the line and you should be able to lower the float down you actually you will eventually learn how that it does bump on the bottom very similar to how it would on a pole or a whip let the line go slack hopefully the float comes to the top like we are now float is underwater even though the line's slack so again same principle as doing the pole just sort of out slide the shot up top shot oh, I mean, I'd put these on well um, uh, we'll go back in or recast out and I've actually gone over depth this time so because it floats on the shuttered it's just lying on its side so we probably want to take about a float length of depth off so we grab the bottom shot that's roughly a float length bring the top shot down and we go back out again oh that was a good guess wasn't it could do with probably just a little bit more on that but that is all intents and purposes about where we want to be so we must remember obviously with a waggler line slack and then it will come it will want to float to the top if you pull the line taut even at that it'll do that so if you hold the line taut you're never going to get the depth plumb right you're just keep adding depth and adding depth and adding depth and it, eventually it probably will but it'll be well over depth um so that's that in a nutshell i do very similar thing with the tip x so i probably clip the hook in the last eye of the rod uh, the biggest iron here is just the reel. Some rods have got little clips on that you can for putting your comb. Put the line up the rod um, up to where the float is, and I generally just mark the top of the float on that. I won't mark top and bottom, I just mark where the tip of the float is. Then I know what the depth is, then I can adjust the float around, I can add depth, take depth off. Um, any other float I've not really bought because it's much the same as uh, fishing the pole stick float, obviously float is attached to the line top and bottom so you can get you can hold the line tight and you're doing the same thing as what you're doing um, with um, the pole basically stick float it is easier I mean I, I make um, you see on some of my past videos um, that I, I put all my stick floats on a winder ready shotted what I might do is take a couple of shot off just to make it light um, so when I, when I cast it out into the, into the float it will naturally come up and sit up um, there's a bit of an art to plumbing the depth up on a stick float. It takes a bit more practice. Um, same with, I mean, a waggler in the river, similar sort of thing actually. You still need to let the line go slack. Um, so it will come up. It, it, it's, it's difficult to explain in here. Um, it's a certain way I, I was taught how to cast, and then the float picks up the float, brings it up, and it will get to the top. It will sit up either out the water or under the water. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully it will sit um, just out the water, and it can adjust it down. And then obviously, eventually, with the flow, it will bend away. So it it's, um, takes a bit of learning that one does. Um, but I think most people um, we see in the shop who are struggling a bit with our plumbing are generally going on sort of day ticket stroke commercial waters. So hopefully, that's of help. So fish use a bigger plummet. Um, if you're struggling it's easier to find it's easier for learning how to bump the bottom if you're fishing the pole or a whip effectively you want to be fishing at the end of it or plumbing up at the end of it um, and then take your time about it really it's not a rush thing it's something that, um, that's quite uh, it make it will make a difference to your plumbing uh, it'll make a difference to your plumbing of course it will it'll make a difference to your fishing um, if you get the plumb right, so you always find the depth, find out where the water is, um, how deep the water is, um, start on the bottom, it's easier to catch fish on the bottom, really we want the fish on the bottom, 
Um, yes, fish will come up in the water and you'll catch it up in the water. But generally speaking, when they're up in the water, they're darting through the water, crashing into your line. It's amazing how quick they can suck in um, small baits and blow them straight out. And the floats doing this, and it drives you insane. So it's actually better to have them on the bottom where they're moseying about on the bottom. They're taking the time a bit more. They'll pick it up, you'll get better bite registration. Um, that's it. So hopefully that's a little bit of help. If you want a bit more help, you can add some comments in the bottom. But it's say plumbing in a nutshell. Um, I can't really put it much more simpler than that. Um, I might try and do a little video out on the bank um, one day. Um, but obviously you don't actually see what the mechanics of it is actually out on the bank because it'll be out, be out in the water. But at least hopefully with the tube you've seen the mechanics of it. Right then guys, uh, don't forget to subscribe. I've got a load more to add on. I'll uh, see you all soon. Take care. Bye bye.